praise the Lord. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. You are all welcome to Better Prayer Ministry International. Better Prayer Ministry International. Upper Wedja Assembly, Dabbed Mega Assembly, and Better Prayer Ministry International. New Bowie, Malam Assembly, also termed as the Throne of Grace Assembly, our teaching service on Wednesdays. I hope at the end of the service, you will be blessed. Your life is never, never going to be the same in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shall we share a word of prayer? Ever gracious Father, we are grateful unto you. King of kings, King of glory, Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. The Lord who has never lost any war before Jesus, the author, the perfect, and the finish of our faith. We love you, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, our teacher, our help, our advocate, our stumper, our strengthener, our intercessor. Once again, Holy Spirit, help us and teach us the word of God that you will be the doers of the word, no hearers to deceive ourselves. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Have your own once again in the midst of your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying of thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all for joining. We hope more brethren will join. Glory be to God for our Bible study. Day. Hallelujah. Yes, as I said, today is teaching service. And we are going to discuss a topic which is very, very crucial, important. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, or in the wake of coronavirus pandemic. So we have our Bible studies. We are going to have Bible studies. So please do not hesitate to ask questions or contribute discussion. And the Lord will bless you. You are all welcome. Don't forget, Better Prayer Ministry International, Upper Wajah Assembly, our Mega Assembly, as well as the Throne of Grace Assembly, that is Better Prayer Ministry International at New Bawi Mala. We thank God for today. So please, you are welcome. Better simply means the house of God. As you fellowship of that, as you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will never, never going to be the same. I am Michael Osi Tebri, the head pastor in charge of Better Prayer Ministry International, Upper Wajah Assembly, and Nibba with Malam Assembly. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We thank God for his great grace. So our topic for discussion today is possible causes of pandemics or epidemics. Possible causes of diseases and sicknesses, possible causes of diseases and sicknesses. So we will go through briefly and then we will draw conclusion. What does it mean? Can one say that, how can you eradicate pandemics? Is pandemic or epidemic scriptural or biblical? And is it even the will of God for his own children to be infected or afflicted with coronavirus pandemic, or with so many sicknesses and diseases. Can that be the will of God? Can that be the will of God? That the Lord God Almighty will allow, will permit his own children, the whole world, to be infected and afflicted with coronavirus pandemic, and die and go to hell? Can that be his will? So we will find out as to whether that is his perfect will or permissible will. Glory be to God. And how can we even avert or eradicate? How can you face out pandemics, epidemics, in short, sicknesses and diseases? How can you uproot them? How can you overcome them? Is it possible to uproot, to eradicate? 
to face out sicknesses and diseases in this world, you go to the scriptures and then other sources to support our views. Glory be to God. So we will discuss four main points. Four main points. That are four possible causes of pandemics or epidemics. And then from there, you can air your views or you can ask questions. You can ask questions. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, when the first point is that when people refuse to serve God or worship God, then God may permit sicknesses and diseases. God may permit sicknesses and diseases when people refuse to serve the king of kings, the king of God, the Lord of hosts who said, the almighty God. When people become recalcitrant upon and refuse to serve the almighty God. Let's go through the scriptures. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. That is not serving the almighty God can cause sicknesses and diseases. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Let's listen to the word of God. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be upon your food and water. I will take away sicknesses from among you. And his blessing will be upon you. And then he says that I will take away sicknesses from among you. I will take away sicknesses from among you. And if you continue to be trying to say, and none will miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will give you a full life span. I will give you a full life span. You will not die premature according to the word of God here. That when you serve God, you read other scriptures, other versions of the Bible. The word of God says, and you shall serve the Lord God Almighty. You shall serve him. So service, serving and worshiping are synonyms here. You shall serve the Lord God Almighty and he will bless your water and food and take away sicknesses from among you or from your midst. So what does it mean when people refuse to serve God acceptably, not just serving him? People may claim, people may purport they are serving the Lord, they are worshiping God. But let me tell you, when you read the word of God, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28, the word of God says, we have to serve God acceptably. We have to serve God acceptably. So you have to ask yourself, is the kind of service, the way you are worshiping God, is it acceptable? Is it acceptable how you behave as a child of God, as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a servant of the Most High God, how you serve God as a Christian, a believer, that the Lord Jesus Christ himself has purchased, has bought with his own precious power. Is your service acceptable? Is your worship acceptable? That's the question. You have to know, my brother, this is a time you have to scrutinize yourself. You have to do self-assessment. Self-assessment, self-scrutiny. You have to scrutinize yourself spiritually, physically, emotionally, psychologically, academically, ministerially. Whatever you have been doing, you have to scrutinize yourself and know so that you'll be able to ascertain as to whether you have been serving God acceptably or not. That's the point. So it's not just serving God, but serving God acceptably. Serving God acceptably. So the question one may ask is, a bishop, an ordained minister of God, officiating same-sex marriage, 
Is this minister of God serving God acceptably? A man of God, a bishop, a priest, a leader in the house of God, a bishop, a presiding bishop of the Most High God, an apostle of the Most High God, a servant of the Most High God, officiating same sex marriage. Is it acceptable? Are we serving God acceptably? Are we serving the King of Kings acceptably? I don't think so. The answer is emphatic. No. You cannot purport claim you are serving God and indulging yourself in homosexuality, lesbianism, abortion, human sacrifice, and this be worshiping God. Glory be to God. So the first point we have to consider is that when people refuse to serve God acceptably, when people refuse to worship God acceptably, God will not bless their food and their water. And once he does not bless their food and their water, sicknesses and diseases are inevitable, unavoidable, are bound to happen. That is what the word of God says. So we have to start serving the king of kings, the king of glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. So we continue serving the Lord. We need to serve God. We need to worship God acceptably. And the second point is that when people disobey God, when people disobey God, when people disobey God, when people go contrary to the word of God, when people are recalcitrant, disobedient, look for and like a Jessica in their actions and inactions, then okay? sicknesses, they can be infected, afflicted, or infected with sicknesses and diseases. So let's go through the word of God. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And then we read from, we read, we also read from Deuteronomy 28, verse 21 to 22. Exodus chapter 15, verse, Exodus chapter 15, Verse 26. Let's listen to the word of God. Esther chapter 15, verse 26. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his command, and keep all his decrees. I will not bring on you any of the diseases. I will not bring on you any of the diseases. If this is probable condition, when you study language, linguistics, or even English grammar, we have three conditions, three conditional sentences, or three types of conditional sentences. The probable condition, the improbable condition, and the impossible condition. And this is the first type, the probable condition. The probable condition. There's probability here. Probability is also in mathematics and in language. Probable condition, where we have the first, the present tense and future. You do this, this one will okay. If you don't do this, this one will not crop up. That's what the word of God is saying. Once you do it, then it will happen to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So the word of God is saying that if that is it, it's conditional, it's a conditional statement or sentence. If, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, it means if you don't do it, but if you do it, 
If you don't do it, negative things can crop up. By the word of God, if you listen carefully, observe carefully, adhere to his voice carefully, religiously, the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, in his sight, if you, if you, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you, another conditional sentence or statement, another conditional sentence or statement here, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases. So my brother, my sister, when you go through some sicknesses and disease, you have to go on your knees and ask God. For all you know, it's probable you might have gone wayward, you might have gone contrary to the word of God, you might have sinned, you might have disobeyed God, and the Lord may also permit it. But that is not his perfect world. That will be his permissible world. Where because of your own actions and inactions, then to allow the enemy to have a hand over your life, to inflict you with all sorts of sicknesses and diseases. I pray that the Almighty God will give you the spirit of obedience so that you obey God in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that none of these diseases will come upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. So, that is the point. Now, when you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 21, 21. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 21 to 22. So the second point is that when people disobey God, once people disobey God, then sicknesses and diseases are inevitable. Sicknesses and diseases. Uh, in the Bible. Let's listen to the word of God. He told me 28 verse 21. The Lord will be you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will plague you. The Lord will plague you. The Lord will plague you. May the Lord never plague you with sicknesses and diseases. May the Lord never plague you with sicknesses and diseases. May the Lord never plague you with sicknesses and diseases in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the word of God says, the Lord will plague you. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with bleed and mildew, which would plague you until you perish. They go have mercy on us. May the Lord never plague us with diseases, sicknesses, and diseases. May the Lord never plague us with any pandemic or epidemic. But when you go through the word of God, what we have just read, if you read the Tommy 28, verse 15, follow me, you get to know that when people disobey God, when people go wayward, all sorts of sicknesses, diseases, couple of curses, they suffer. Sicknesses, curses, diseases are inevitable. That will be the result of disobedience. So my brother, my sister, don't disobey God. Repent. Repent all presidents all over the world. Repent all those who have legalized uh, same-sex marriage, homosexuality, lesbianism. Repent and change that decision. Reverse it and discard it and plead the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob for mercy so that he will not plague us with diseases, with sicknesses. If you look at the symptoms of this kind of plague, 
They are similar. They are similar. They, they look, they, they are the same as that of what? COVID-19 pandemic. The, the symptoms of this kind of play, the symptoms seem similar. Seem similar. They are like that. The same, like the way people, when they, they are infected or afflicted with COVID-19 or coronavirus pandemic, the same symptoms are these stipulated here, similar. And I pray that may this not come from our God, but just as I said, God intentionally will not afflict his children, kill his children with any disease, with any sickness, but our own action, to our actions and action, our disobedience, they compare him. So we need to repent and believe the gospel. The whole world needs repentance. All our leaders need repentance. All our leaders need repentance. All those in position of authority need to repent and surrender their lives to the Almighty God. They need to repent. All presidents all over the world need to repent, must repent and turn away from their demonic practices. Legalizing same-sex marriage, homosexuality, abortion, lesbianism, they have to change. So that we cry unto the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for mercy. As you plead for mercy from the God of heaven, then you will hear us. Then you will hear us, you have mercy upon us all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if you look at it very well, the Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with bleed and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. So this is rare symptom of all. Coronavirus, suffering, heat, suffering from fever, mildew, inflammation, and what? So can we ascribe this to God? Can we attribute coronavirus pandemic that God might have allowed, God might have brought it to us? But what we need to do is that we need to change. We need to repent of our sins and plead God for mercy. Whether the Lord God Almighty brought it or through one's action in action that this thing might have occurred, once you call upon God and we repent of our sins, I believe that the Almighty God will have mercy on us all and will forgive us all our sins. We we'll have mercy on the whole world and deliver us from this messenger of Satan called COVID-19 pandemic or coronavirus pandemic. We need to repent and to the almighty God for his grace and mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Now the third point that we need to consider, the third point that we need to consider is that the third point that we need to consider is that yeah, the third point that we need to consider is this that ignorance or sheer megalomania ignorance ignorance one of the possible causes of pandemic is that ignorance or sheer megalomania that is the third point when you are ignorant when you don't study the word of God when what you are supposed to do, you don't do it, how can you? You then you suffer. How would you suffer? How would you die? How would you suffer from all sorts of sicknesses and diseases? Some of us, everything that every pain, every minute we take medicine, we take tablets. That might not be the will of God. You can even use water as medicine if you don't know. Water as medicine, 
When you are going through any headache, you don't need to go and take paracetamol. Just take some water. Drink more water. And try. And exercise your body, exercise yourself. Have some rest. And you recover, you'll be fine. But if you are not careful, stomach ache, headache, whatever you go through, you get any more any second minute to take some medicine. You take some tablets. Taking more chemicals or medicines or tablets into your system can even kill you, my brother, my sister, if you don't know. Learn to take water as medicine. Learn to use water, even water as medicine. There are plants. You can use them as medicine. Instead of everything, visiting, absentees. If you are not careful, that can also destroy you. So the third one is the third possible, one of the third, one of the possible causes of what sicknesses and diseases is ignorance or sheer megalomania, which is also scripture. Let's go through the word of God. Let's read from Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. This is a popular quotation. You can read it. The word of God says, For lack of knowledge, my own people perish. My own people perish for lack of knowledge. My own people. He, the Lord said, My people perish. My people are perished, are destroyed, die. For lack of knowledge, you don't know you are left and right. If you are not careful and a child of God, and you visit one of the foolish and fake prophets, they can kill you. They can take you to hell. They can take you to hell, give you white oil, green oil, green pepper, and what have you. You take that, that can lead you to hell. Recently, somebody came out of a, uh, uh, for some de de demonic direction, some demonic direction, that when you take your Bible, you go to, you see a man here in the Bible. Take it, put it in water and drink it. Is it not poisonous? Is it not demonic direction? And people are doing it in Africa. Hey! Repent, even not in Africa. Some people even heard it outside Ghana, all over, even in Europe. Some started doing so that they will not be infected or afflicted with coronavirus pandemic. That is demonic direction. That is demonic prophecy. And they need to repent. So if you are not careful, you take this, that can kill you. You put it into your system, that can kill you, my brother, my sister. So you need to repent. And when you die, where will you go? Can you make it to heaven? Heaven or hell? So we need to very vigilant and wise. We need to be wise as children of God. Glory be to God. So, people who are not, people being ignorant of even possible causes of coronavirus pandemic, and even the perfect will of God can lead to their destruction and death. Can lead to their destruction and death. If you don't know what the matter proper, what the matter happened, you don't do any research to find out to uncover or unravel the truth or mysteries behind certain things, and then you leave, you are loving like that. You can die and go to hell. You can die and go to hell. People can mislead you. You can go where we can go contrary to the word of God, and at the end of the day, you will not make it to heaven. Some of you, some kind of teachings you have been following, adhering to. If you don't repent and turn to the Lord Jesus, that will lead you to hell. My brother, my sister. So repent, believe the gospel. So people be ignorant. Be ignorant. Or ignorance or sheer megalomania can lead to one of the possible causes of pandemics, epidemics, or sicknesses and diseases worldwide. Glory be to God. The fourth point that we have to consider is biological weapons. Biological weapons can be one of the causes of sicknesses and diseases, particularly one of the causes of pandemics. 
one of the causes of pandemics. So let's go through and you have to understand the meaning of pandemics so that we'll be able to appreciate this point that we are trying to put across. Glory be to God. So what are biological weapons? What are biological weapons at all? Let's see its definition. Biological weapons are microorganisms like virus, bacteria, fungi, or other toxins that are produced and released deliberately, intentionally to cause disease and death in humans, in human beings, animals, and in plants. Glory be to God. So can you see? Biological weapons are intentionally produced and released to cause death, sicknesses in human beings, in plants, and in animals. And that can cause death destruction. You can find out from the scientists or from any standard scientific dictionary, learn to know more about biological weapons. And if you look at this carefully, and you relate it, you compare and contrast the advent of uh, 5G, introduction of 5G in China, you can compare and contrast, you can analyze the time that 5G was introduced, and the time, the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic, you have to check, first check the date, the time, that it was introduced, the first country will be not even in China, the whole world, just go and find out. Some of you may not even know. The first country that ever introduced, that started using 5G in the whole world. Find out. And that country, you can also link it to the first country where, where they did coronavirus breakout. The first country that witnessed of the nineteen, and the first country that also holds that witness then introduce the five G that is already in the system. Some of you may not be aware. So if you look at it very well, it has some bearing. That's the point I'm trying to see. I am not saying that Chinese madam brought this as biological weapon. But you have to analyze it, compare and contrast, and draw your own conclusion. That's the point I'm trying to make. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you have to understand. Let's read. A scripture is biblical. The people, the heart of human beings, the heart is desperately wicked, demonic, deadly, destructive, can kill people, can destroy people. If you don't know, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Let's read it quickly. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Let's listen to the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Let's listen to the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Good. The heart, the heart of a human being is deceitful above all things and beyond pure. Who can understand it? Who can understand it? Who can understand it that a human being, nation, could decide that I will bring coronavirus? I will bring coronavirus as biological weapon to inflict people, to keep people, to destroy people, precious souls, a country to do so. I'm telling you, one of the developed countries is capable of doing so. That is why Africans all over the world, we don't need to depend on foreign assistance, tied loans, 
tide age, you have to reject them. Is it possible for Africans to reject loans, foreign assistance, financial assistance? Is it possible? We claim, African nations claim to be independent. But are Africans really independent, politically independent, financially independent, academically independent? Are Africans really, genuinely independent? The first president of Gabon, Shweimba. But one says something, the first president of Gabon, one says something. I quote in French, let me quote it in French. Le Gabon est indépendant. Le Gabon est indépendant. Mais entre le Gabon et la France, rien n'est changé. Tout continue comme avant. Le Gabon est indépendant maintenant. Mais entre le Gabon et la France, rien n'est changé. Tout continue comme avant. What he's saying is that now Gabon is independent. But between Gabon and France, nothing has changed. Everything continues as it used to be. As it used to be, all African countries, we claim we are independent now. But are we independent politically, economically, financially, academically, socially, emotionally, even psychologically, are we independent? We are purporting, we are claiming to be independent. Them, but we are not independent. We don't need to depend on foreign assistance, high loan, high aid, left, right, center. That is a saying that a beggar has no choice. If you don't stop depending on the Europeans, on the US, or whoever, whatever foreign country it is, my brother, my sister, in Africa, we will go nowhere. We will go nowhere. Glory be to God. So this is the point. We have to consider and we have to work on it accordingly and we have to change. So we have considered four points today in our Bible studies, four possible causes of pandemics, epidemics, or four possible causes of diseases and sicknesses. And then we have the first point that when to the first point that when people refuse to serve God acceptably, not just serving God, but when people refuse to serve God acceptably. The second point, when people disobey God, when people are recalcitrant, look for, look like a doctor. In action and in action, they don't serve God, they disobey God. Then sicknesses and diseases may crop up. They may be infected or afflicted with sicknesses and diseases. And the third point is that the third point, that's one of the possible causes, is that ignorance or sheer megalomania. The word of God said, for lack of knowledge, people perish. The Lord has bought, the Lord Jesus has bought them with his own precious blood. But if you don't change, you don't repent, and you don't do what is right and acceptable, and acceptable, we can suffer from so many things that we shouldn't suffer from. So the Lord Jesus said, the word of God said, my people are perished for lack of knowledge. And the fourth point that we consider is that biological weapons, biological weapons, can developed countries can intentionally, deliberately produce and release biological weapons in the form of what? Virus, bacteria, fungi to inflict people, kill people, to bring diseases, sicknesses, and death. So we read from Jeremiah 17, verse 9, to baptize that that is scriptural before the heart of a human being is desperately wicked, deeply demonic. And unless that person or a human being repents, or unless somebody repents and gives his or her life to the Lord Jesus, is capable of doing anything, that is the point you are trying to emphasize here. If you don't repent and give your life to the Lord Jesus, you can destroy your own family members. You don't care. You don't care, you are heartless, you don't care. So you need to repent. You can't claim that you can do good without the Lord Jesus, without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Hallelujah. So if you have questions, you can ask. Any question and contribution from all listeners all over the world.
God bless you. Hallelujah. Any question or contribution? It's a discussion. Hallelujah. Yes, if you have any question, you can ask. If you have any question, hallelujah. John chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. I don't think so. And as you know, in every case, you may have exception or exceptional issue. But the Lord Jesus Christ Himself stated categorically that when you read verse, I think verse three, neither this man nor his parents sin, because originally etymologically, right from Genesis Esther, just as you read, you got to know that basically. The primary cause of sicknesses and diseases is sin, is death. Because we have what is called Adamic sin nature. Do you, you get a point? You have the Adamic sin in man. You might not have done anything. That's why the Lord Jesus even related it. The Lord Jesus related it to that neither this man nor his parents sin. See, Jesus said. But this happened so that the work of God, that the work of God might be displayed in his life. The work of God might be displayed. So in everything we have exceptional. If you study science or math or whatever, you have exceptional cases. But one thing you should also take note is that the basic cause of sicknesses and diseases is sin. Right from endemic nature. One the way the word of God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sometimes you may not sin deliberately, but even your parents, your great grandparents might have done something wrong. That you might even suffer. That's why we have generational curses and we have generational blessings. We have transgenerational blessings and generational curses. Hallelujah. Mama, is that point clear? So that is how it is. We thank our mommy for her contribution. God bless you all. Amen. God is good. All the time, God is good. Now, I want us, I want us to pray for Ghana, for Africa as a whole. Wherever you are, we are going to pray that the Almighty God, that the Almighty God will have mercy on us all. We pray that the Almighty God will have mercy. But before then, I want you to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray so that the Almighty God Himself will have mercy on us. In the we are going to pray. We are going to pray. And before then, I want you, I want you to, those who don't know the Lord Jesus, I want them to give their life to the Lord Jesus. I want them to. Invite them to come to the seven knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want them right now. If you are here, wherever you are, and you don't know the Lord Jesus, I want to lead you to give your life to the Lord Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you need to give your life to the Lord Jesus right now. When you read as of the passage of the 17 verse 30, the Bible goes say, for in terms of ignorance, the Lord God Almighty went at it. But now commands all men, all people everywhere to repent. The Almighty God is commanding all men 
all people everywhere to repent. So wherever you are, you need to repent and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ now. You need to repent and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ now. When you reach Hebrews of the church, verse 40, Hebrews of the church, verse 40, says, therefore here we do not have a continuing city, an enduring city, but we look for the one that is come that is heaven. We don't have an enduring city. We don't have family city. Family sister here. One day we will like you know, we will leave this earth. If you leave, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus right now. I want you to say this prayer, loud, simple, but loud, transforming prayer after me, and invite the Lord Jesus into your heart. If you want to be born again, if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that Jesus is Lord and believe from my heart that God raised him from the dead. Dear Lord Jesus, please save me today. I repent of my sin and I give you my spirit. I give you my soul. I give you my body. Dear Lord Jesus, please write my name in the book of life. All the days of my life, I will serve you acceptably. I will obey you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, help me to serve the Lord Jesus, to love the Lord Jesus with an undying love. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for saving me today. I am born again. I'm born from above. All the days of my life, I will serve the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray that Lord Jesus have mercy on me. We are praying for mercy and grace. When you read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, the word of God says, Now therefore let us come bodily to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Wherever you are, we have come to the throne of grace. Asking God for mercy and grace. Let's pray. Pray for grace and mercy. Pray for grace and mercy for the whole world. Pray for grace and mercy for Africa. Pray for grace and mercy for Europe. Pray for grace and mercy. Pray for grace and mercy for the U.S. Pray for grace and mercy for Europe. Pray for grace and mercy for North America and South America. Pray for grace and mercy for South Africa. Pray for grace and mercy. Pray for grace and mercy for the whole African continent. Pray that God have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on Africa. Have mercy on Europe. Have mercy on Asia. Have mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, have mercy. Lord Jesus, 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 have mercy on Europe. Have mercy on Asia. Have mercy on Africa. In the name of the Lord Jesus, don't play God with pandemic law. Lord Jesus, please don't play God with any pandemic. Don't play God with any epidemic. We plead the blood of Jesus for mercy. We plead the blood of Jesus. For mercy, we plead the blood of Jesus. For mercy, Father, be strong and be messenger of Satan. Just stand and pant against your church, against your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, have mercy. Please don't play God. Please don't Africa. Please don't insult your children. Oh Lord, from any pandemic or epidemic, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Please, Lord, let every pandemic be affected. Let every epidemic be affected. Let coronavirus be affected and destroyed and die in the name of Jesus. But uh, let CSM, let CSM be affected and die in this country, in Ghana, in Africa as a whole. But uh, let every coronavirus die all over the world in the name of the Lord Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus for mercy. We plead the blood of Jesus for mercy. Whoever might have said, whoever might have said, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus, for mercy, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, have mercy, have mercy on Ghana, have mercy on Africa, have mercy on Europe, have mercy on Asia, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, have mercy, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy, Jesus, 
Son of David, have mercy. Have mercy on Ghana. Have mercy on Europe. Have mercy on Africa as a whole. Have mercy on Asia. Have mercy on North America. Have mercy on South America. Have mercy on South Korea. Have mercy on North Korea. Have mercy on China. Have mercy. Have mercy. China would have introduced this. Lord Jesus, the coronavirus. The blood of Jesus for mercy. We plead the blood of Jesus for mercy for China. We plead the blood of Jesus for mercy for all and sundry. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Even for false prophets and foolish prophets. We plead the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on the whole world. Have mercy on the whole world. And let coronavirus pandemic disappear and die. Disappear and die. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on the whole world. 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 Destroy the root of coronavirus. Destroy these roots. Destroy. Destroy the roots of coronavirus. Pandemic in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us destroy the root. Destroy the root. A root. Coronavirus pandemic. All over the world. I plead the blood of Jesus. Those who are suffering from any sickness, any disease. Oh Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus. For mercy, oh, for mercy, oh, for mercy, oh, for mercy, oh, for mercy, oh. Father, let us work together for our good. I will say, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Them are the poor, according to your purpose. Oh Jesus, we plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus for your church. We plead the blood of Jesus. For mercy for the whole world in the name of Jesus. But I have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus. Please have mercy. Lord Jesus. Have mercy on the whole world. Have mercy on Europe. Have mercy on Asia. Have mercy on Africa. Have mercy on our countries. Have mercy on our nations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God of Abraham. Have mercy. God of Isaac. Have mercy. God of Jacob. Have mercy on Israel. Lord Jesus. Have mercy. For what the God says. When you pray, we should see the prosperity of Jerusalem. We should see the prosperity of Israel. I pray for Israel. We pray for Israel. Lord Jesus, bless Israel. Bless Jerusalem. Bless, oh Lord. Bless Italy. Bless Israel. Bless, oh Lord. Bless all nations. Bless your children. We pray for Israel. Lord, have mercy on Israel. Have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy on all Jews who don't know Jesus to come to the saving knowledge. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on the whole world. You do not see the death, the destruction of anyone in the name of Jesus. All that you look for, all that you see, the all unsanded shall repent and come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Son of David, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. And let every sickness die, disappear from the whole world. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, we celebrate your majesty. Glory be to your holy name. May the Almighty God bless you. May the King of Kings bless you. May the Lord of hosts bless you. May the God of all grace and mercy be gracious and merciful unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you now and forevermore. In the name of the Lord Jesus, glory be to God. Stay blessed. Goodbye. Know and believe that the Lord Jesus saves. He shall surely save you in the name of Jesus. Repent and believe the gospel. God bless you. Goodbye.